Hey, it's me, MLB. Here's chapter 67 of Chance Ball, and this one is titled, Whoa, Whoa, Whoa. Your camera roll was filled with videos and images of the two of them just watching volleyball together. And just to prove that it wasn't the TV that had your little girl's attention, you'd put on a kid's show while she was playing in the kitchen at your feet, and then you would get Darby to change the channel to a sports one, and as soon as she heard the telltale squeak of shoes on the volleyball court, she would just drop whatever she was holding and crawl as fast as she could towards the lounge room. You thought it was the funniest and cutest thing ever, but neither you nor Darby could blame her since you both shared a passion for volleyball. Koemi's first birthday was coming up and you had your parents, Ray and the V-League team and some of your work friends around to celebrate the day. There were people going everywhere and at one point you realised you hadn't seen the birthday girl for a while. Um, mum, have you seen Koemi? I haven't seen her for a while, you asked your mum. Um, I saw her with Darby a few minutes ago, your mum replied. Oh, okay, thanks. And off you went to look for Darby, hoping that he had his daughter with him. You found him and his team watching volleyball on the TV and right in the middle of all the guys was your little birthday girl with her large grey eyes glued to the screen and her chubby cheeks hanging out a little. Oh, you sighed to yourself as you pulled your phone out of your pocket to take a video to add to the growing collection. How cute. Once you'd taken the picture of the unsuspecting group, you called for Darby's attention. Babe, it's time to cut the cake, you said. Huh? Oh, yep, he said, reaching for the remote to pause it. No sooner had he paused it, Koemi put her little chubby hands out and did the grabbing motion towards the TV, while whining urgently for Darby to put the TV back on again. We've got to cut your cake, baby girl, he announced to her as he slung her over his shoulder while she arched her back and started wailing at being taken away from the TV. She's got her priorities, right? Pueji laughed as he followed behind Darby and tried to cheer Ko up, but to no avail. That year's birthday picture had everyone's smiling faces and little Kate absolutely bawling her eyes out while sitting in her high chair with a birthday cake within arm's reach. Your girl had always been calm and quiet as a baby, but the older that she was getting, the more her little personality was shining through and she had a stubborn side to her, which didn't surprise you. And at 14 months of age, she suddenly found her words and was working tirelessly at stringing them together. Her first word was dada, Closely followed by Mama, and very close third was Wo Wo Ball, which you came to realise was volleyball, but she couldn't quite wrap her little tongue around the V letter with the L's in there, so it became Wo Wo Ball. Wo Wo Ball was life. Wo Wo Ball was what got her up in the morning, and Wo Wo Ball was what put her to sleep each night. When she was having an unsettled night and was whingy and clingy and finding it hard to sleep, the only thing that would settle her down was if Daddy put her to sleep and played the sounds of his teammates running around during practice earlier that evening. Fueji, as you probably suspected, cottoned on to what Darby was doing, pressing record on his phone and then leaving it sitting in his gym bag, and he would get down and whisper messages to Darby so that your man would get them later that night while he was putting Koemi to sleep. Amid the squeaking shoes and sounds of the volleyball being smacked, such messages as Darby Loves Cock and Harder Daddy Darby were regular favourited whispered messages that never failed to make Darby chuckle deeply as he was carrying an almost asleep Koemi around her darkened room over one shoulder. I'm gonna frickin' bitch slap him next time I see him. Darby grunted as he walked downstairs after putting Koemi to sleep. Who? Why? You asked, with only mild concern as he was sitting at the kitchen table doing stock take for the corner store that year. Hunter, he keeps whispering crap into the mic during practice. You totally do the same, don't even try and lie. You smirked at him over the top of the laptop. Yeah, true. He replied with a devious chuckle. You shook your head and went back to typing and Darby walked around to see what you were doing. Hey, you gonna do this for the rest of your life? He asked. What's that supposed to mean? You asked, a little defensively. I just mean you're a qualified coach. And you're not even coaching. He said. So I'm bringing money in, does it matter? Okay, if that's what you really love doing, then do it. But if you want to teach volleyball, and now's the time to take action, he said, before pushing off the table and kissing you on the top of the head and then heading for the lounge room. Keep the volume down, you warned, calling out after him. If Ko hears volleyball on the TV, she'll climb out of her cot and beg to watch it with you. This was a real threat. You weren't even playing, as she'd done it last week. All you heard was her little voice call out, Whoa, ball! And then a th soft thump and then the pitter-patter of little feet as she toddled from the room and ran to the baby gate at the top of the stairs, calling for Daddy to come and get her. Darby grunted in acknowledgement and left, leaving you to think about what he had said. I just don't want to go through the hassle of finding some team to coach. And then what if I don't even like the players? I've already seen what happened with Darby and his team and that left a bad taste in my mouth. Mind you, it'll be a girls team I'm working with. I wouldn't want to work with a boys team. 
you pondered on things while continuing stock take and then as it neared 10 p.m you turned in for the night so that you wouldn't be too tired when koemi called out for you to get up to her at 6 a.m the next morning the following day darby left early for practice and you and koemi saw him off at the front door waving to him as he disappeared off down the road Okay, Missy Pie, we need to get some food today because we are down to the last packet of corn chips and you can't even eat them. You chatted to her as you got some breakfast ready for her and then after she had finished, you cleaned up and then changed her clothes in preparation to go to the store. You needed to get a few extra things while you were out, so decided to go to the main shops that were a little further away and you clipped Co into the bike seat that you had purchased a while ago. Then off you pedaled to the shops that were about 20 minutes bike ride away. Once there, you put the bright-eyed little one in the trolley and did your shopping while she looked at all the lights and pointed to different things. Bear! She shouted when she saw a big stuffed teddy bear out the front of the toy store and you grinned at her. Do you like the bear? Did you want to have a closer look? You asked, turning the trolley and walking closer so she could pat its face. She giggled and reached over the edge of the trolley, but something beyond the bear also caught her attention and she screeched with excitement. Wow a ball! Wow a ball! She cried. Her little legs flicking back and forth with exuberant excitement to expel some of that extreme delight out of her system. Where, baby? You asked, looking in past the bear to see the volleyball. There, in a sports ball bin, was a Mikasa volleyball, but miniature sized, and you couldn't help but chuckle and awe at its cute size. Oh, I have to get you this one. I know you sleep with Daddy's one, but it's huge, so let me get your own wowo ball, you said, pushing the trolley in so she could get the ball. The minute her chubby little hands wrapped around it, you knew it was going to be her favourite toy. And when she had a meltdown because the checkout lady had to take it to scan it you, so that you could pay for it, you knew that the love had run deep already. Daddy will be excited to see this, you said to her, taking a picture of how she was clutching it protectively to her front. You sent the picture to Darby with the caption, Look Daddy, I have my own ball now, and smiled as you hit send. It's just so far away. You heard a lady say sadly from nearby, and you looked up to see what was going on. Yeah, a second lady lamented. Both my boys love volleyball, but there are no places that teach volleyball to young kids around here, and it's really upsetting. My two-year-old's obsessed, the first lady continued. If only there were a place that would teach volleyball to kids under three. Everywhere I've looked has been ages three and up, but surely there's a calling for kids under that age to start. If anywhere started up around here, I would definitely send my girl. Oh, same here. My twin boys would be signed up immediately. They're both 18 months. You continued slowly past the ladies and looked at Koemi again as she hugged her ball. Well, my Koemi is coming up to 18 months. What if I ran a mini players daycare volleyball training thing? You wondered. Those two mums sound really keen. And before you knew it, you had turned your trolley around and had walked back to the two mums chatting by the poster that they'd seen. Um, hi, sorry, excuse me, you said politely, catching the attention of the two mums. Um, I couldn't help but overhear your conversation about the lack of volleyball training for under three in this area. Yes, the first mum said. Everything's so far away and I'm not going to travel into the next town for an hour's practice. I see your little one also loves volleyball, the second commented upon seeing the death grip Comey had on the miniature Picasso volleyball. Ah uh, yeah, you chuckled. She comes by it naturally though, my boyfriend's on the V-League team and I played heavily in high school. Ooh, impressive, the first lady said with awe. Do you know of any places that would take under three years of age for volleyball around here? Um, well, unfortunately no, but I do have a degree in coaching, specifically volleyball, and I was wondering if I started up a class for 18 months to three years, would you be interested? And would you know of others who would be interested? <gasps> oh my yes, the first exclaimed. I have two other friends with little ones who love volleyball. I'd definitely let them know. Um, can I have your contact details? The second asked you. Please let us know when you start. It would be wonderful to join. You swapped details with the ladies and then chatted a little more and then said goodbye before heading off to do the shopping. Well, looks like I'll be starting my own mini players training group, you said to Koemi. Wow, a ball, she announced, holding up her little ball to show you. Yes, that's it. Wow, a ball toddler volleyball training, you said. I love the name. The rest of that day, you were distracted by thoughts of starting up your own kiddie team. And as soon as Darby got back earlier that evening, you blurted it all out. He was super excited and eager to help you get started. So you looked up the process right away. Firstly, you got a business number and registered the Wowo Ball volleyball name linked to your name so that it would be registered to you. Then you looked up the prices that you could charge and somewhere where you could rent a court and train for two hours a day. Two hours is a long time, isn't it? Darby asked. Well, we won't be throwing balls all that time. We'll be doing other stuff, you said, scrolling through potential places. 
There was a small place not far from you that claimed the court was in the backyard of someone's place, but it seemed nice and you thought that maybe you'd go and check it out. So the next day you left your little one at home with Dubby to watch volleyball and you went to scout out some of the places that you'd seen ads for the day before. Oh, how exciting. Look at you, little entrepreneur starting your own business in volleyball coaching training. Well done. Stay tuned for chapter 68 tomorrow to find out how things are going.